Hi, I'm Steve Hargadon, and I want to invite you to join us for the first ever online Tiny House Summit, February 20th to the 24th. We have some great speakers. I hope you enjoy the following preview clips. Each day of our five-day event will have free presentations for you to watch with over 30 in total. Please do sign up to join us at tinyhousesummit.com, and we'll see you online. Welcome to my presentation for the Tiny House Summit. My name is Saul Hansen and I got involved with Tiny Houses when I volunteered to help my local high school with their Tiny House program. They built Tiny Houses as part of their shop class. From there, with a group of other people, I founded the Collaborative Tiny House Project so I could help other schools replicate and implement other Tiny House programs. And everything has just kind of gone forward from there. It ended up being a a pretty a, a lot larger project than we initially thought and so just as a result of committing to it learned a, a lot of uh, a lot of different material so I'm going to be covering six different areas so I'm going to be covering the philosophy and concepts that we will f that we found resonate with the tiny house movement from the project that we did the different demographics most in interested in our project and in, in as well tiny houses in general and statistics revolving around why tiny houses are such a good idea. And then we're going to move to the lessons learned from the collaborative tiny house project. And, uh, and from there, that's going to segue into how to navigate legal pitfalls before building a tiny house. And then we're going to go to a conclusion. If a school were to open up this program to the community and be like, hey, we need this many 2x4s, we need this many 2x6s, these are the materials that we need is how much roofing we need between local businesses and and uh, different uh, companies like that I think that it would be very easy for all of the these companies and all of the community members and the parents to be like oh totally let's 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 get this done because not only is, is this going to provide an incredible education for our children but this tiny house is then going to go directly to serving a need in our community like right here and so, um, so tiny house building programs in schools really can be a phenomenal way of uniting the community without even creating um, much of an investment on the part of the school. In conclusion, in order for the tiny house movement to gain momentum and gain ground with local codes and hopefully even financial backing from banks, there has to be a high standard of quality that is established so that cities are not threatened by tiny houses the same way that they are threatened by RV parks or mobile home parks. If tiny houses fall in the same category, then they will be outlawed from city limits and pushed to the outskirts of cities the same way that trailer parks are, and if not further. So in whatever you build, I ask that you work hard to build things that are beautiful and impressive make tiny houses that are gorgeous and uh, that really are a, you know a, a very incredible statement of craftsmanship um, please do your best to incorporate the highest level of quality in any, in any of the tiny houses you build and if you attach them to trailers uh, make sure you attach them to the trailers really really well um, if a tiny house is being pulled along the highway and it falls off the trailer then uh, probably isn't going to you know, benefit the, the movement in general very much. It could lose some ground really quickly. So um, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for joining me for this presentation. And I'm really grateful for the Tiny House Summit for inviting me to be a keynote speaker to share some of this information.